In this tutorial series, we've successfully built out a Spotify clone. Now, this is the Spotify clone right here on my screen. And as you can see, it shows a list of artists. We can check out all the artists. We can search for an artist or song. It shows a list of songs. These are just demo songs. We could click on it and we could listen to any song. As I said, we could search for a song. You know, we could log in, log out. We've basically built a good Spotify clone. And what we're going to do now is to deploy this Spotify clone onto the web so anyone can use it. Now, to deploy this, we're going to be using a platform called Zit. So, Zit is a CI CD development platform that helps you get to production and operate in production. Zit is also great for teams running Kubernetes workloads and also great for multi cloud. But in this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Zit to deploy our Django application onto the web. So, earlier in this tutorial series, we already used Zit to deploy a Postgres database. And that Postgres database was deployed on AWS. So we use AWS relational database service, but we didn't even have to interact with AWS that much because Zit already did all of that for us on the back end. So I just showed you how to basically fill some forms right here and create a database, which is quite good. But now, as I said in this video, we're going to be deploying our project onto the web. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. Before we get started with this video, we need to sign up to Zit. So there will be a link in the description below where you can sign up to Zit so you can continue with this video or just go to zit.co and then sign up and log in. So once you have your account logged in, then you can follow along with this video. The first thing we need to do is to create a repository for GitHub and push our code onto GitHub. So let's do that real quick. Right here, I'm on GitHub and what I'm just going to do is to click on this addition sign and click on new repository. Once I click on that, I'm going to say Spotify iPhone clone. I'm just going to say Django Spotify clone. Right? Uh, no, I'm just going to say Spotify clone. Okay, so this is good. And what I'm just going to do now is I don't really need any of this. I'm just going to say create repository. Now, once I have this done, it gives me the code I can use to push my code onto this repository. I'm going to come back here. And all of this is good. So what I'm just going to do is, you know, the good thing is we don't really need to set up anything again because this is just because we have already we come into settings right here. We have already basically set up everything we need. We've set up all the static files, all the, all the templates. Everything we need has been set up. Now we don't really need to set up everything. Also, the database has been set up. So we don't need to change anything. What we just need to do now is to let me just collapse all of this to make sure all our files is good. Now, this right here is what I'm going to push onto GitHub. I'm just going to open up my terminal. I'm going to open one up and I could close this. And I'm just going to create a new terminal right here. So I have two terminals. And I'm just going to say git init just to initialize a new repository. Let me make sure I'm in the correct folder. So we need to push this folder, which is the folder that has the manage.py file because that is the root directory of our project. So I have initialized a new git repository and I'm not going to add any um, readme file. Now the next thing is to commit. If I commit, I'm going to add all of my files. I'm just going to say git add and now I can commit. Good. And I'm just going to take this to branch to main, git branch main. And then I'm going to copy the next one is why I like GitHub. It just gives us all the commands. It's also good to know these commands sometimes. And good. So as you can see, that has successfully pushed our code onto GitHub. So I'm going to come in here and hit refresh. Good. So now, as you can see, we have our code on GitHub. So we have our full Django code right here on GitHub. Now we can move forward with deploying this on Zit. One more thing we need to do before going over to Zit to deploy is that we need to have a requirement.txt file. Now this requirement.txt file is going to have all the libraries that we need for this project. So let me explain what I mean. If you come over to views, you're going to see that we are importing a lot of libraries. We're importing regex, beautiful soup, requests, you know, some external libraries that don't come automatically with Django. Now, because we are importing these libraries, when we are going to be deploying on Zit, we need to tell Zit what libraries we need 
so it knows what libraries to install or deploy with our project. Now this is why we use requirement.txt. Now this requirement.txt is a file that is going to contain all of those libraries. Now to actually generate that file, you just need to run this command right here. So pip3 freeze, then greater than sign requirements.txt. Once you run that command, it's going to generate a requirement.txt file right here in right here in your code in the root directory of your code now the thing is that if you are working on a virtual environment it's only going to generate a file just for that virtual environment but if you are not working on a virtual environment then you it's going to generate a file that contains libraries that is basic that basically has all the libraries on your computer and you don't want that so this is why you can you have to is you can just come here and basically just choose the ones or filter it out if you're not working with a virtual environment so just come here and filter the ones you don't need out but if you're working with a virtual environment then you don't really have to do that so this is good now this is what we need um this requirement.txt file is going to be in the github link below that is going to be for the completed project for the final product so if you don't even want to generate this file just go over to github and copy all of this and just paste it in your requirement.txt so now that we have this we actually need to update it with our github because we deployed our github without this requirement.txt so i'm just going to reinitialize and i'm going to git add and git commit but this time i'm going to say second commit and yeah that's seen that i added requirement.txt file and we don't even need to do that again so don't need to, yeah because it already exists we also don't need to do that again but then we just need to push and that should have updated it for us so now if we come back in here and go over here and hit refresh you can now see that we have the file requirements.txt now that we have our code pushed to github we can now come to z to actually deploy the code once again, there will be a link in the description below that will take you to Zit. So you just need to log into Zit. And I logged in with my GitHub. You can log in with whatever you want to log in with. And what I'm going to do now is to click on New right here on the top right corner. And I'm just going to click. Or actually, I'm just going to come right here and click on New Project, this one. And we're going to be using AWS Lambda to deploy this. So we're deploying our code basically as a serverless container. So right here, you're going to see AWS Lambda. If you don't see, just search AWS. If you just search AWS, you should see AWS Lambda automatically. I'm just going to click on this one. And right here, automatically, because I logged in or I created an account on Zit with my GitHub, you can see that now I have GitHub or my GitHub repositories shown here. But let's say you logged in or created your account with uh, like Google or something else. Then you have to connect your GitHub. But so I can I can just select this repository. What you just need to do is to search the repository for the Spotify clone we just created. But as you can see, mine is already at the top. And I'm just gonna select it. Now this is very good because Zit just automatically makes this very easy. Now I'm just gonna click on continue. And right here where we have build and run, it just tells you to pick the framework you are using. So right now you can see all the frameworks they support. I am using Django, so I'm just going to click on Django and I'm going to leave the Python version the way it is. I'm going to leave this and I'm going to leave this build command because that is required. And I'm also going to leave this the way it is. And right here where we have listen port, Django listens to 8000. So as you can see, if they said the port your app will be running on, for example, 3000 is for express.js. But we know that Django runs on 8000, so we're going to leave it. I'm going to continue and right here where we have this organize i'm just going to click in i'm going to leave this as it is and i'm just going to click on deploy so this is going to take me to a page where this is going to be deployed and this usually takes around five minutes or ten minutes max um, but from my from my past experiences it doesn't take more than five minutes except there is a problem so I'm just going to wait for this to deploy and I'm going to be back once this has been deployed successfully. So as you can see, it shows that this has successfully been deployed. 
now it's going to redirect me to the page where I can view this deployed project. What I just need to do now is to click on visit deployment and it's going to, for the first time, it's going to take a few seconds to load it up just because it's getting everything together. But as you can see, our project has successfully been deployed to the web. So this is the login page. This shows that our project has been deployed. Now we have successfully deployed our project. There is one thing I want to show you in Zit that is very useful. If we come back to Zit, there is something called preview branches. Now let me explain this to you. Now if we come to Zit and we come into settings, and in settings, if we come into source and branch, so first of all, you need to go to the project you just deployed, come into settings and come into source and branch. So you can see the CI CD settings, and you can basically see the GitHub repo that is used to deploy this particular project. You can change the source, you know. And if you come under branch rules, you're going to see that we see auto deploy branches. Now, this means that if we create another branch, ex apart from the main branch, if we create another branch or a separate branch, that branch is going to be deployed automatically. And Zit is actually going to create or generate a new endpoint, so a new URL for us to preview that branch. So this is quite good because let's say you have a problem with your application and you want to kind of fix it or you or you don't even have a problem and let's say you just want to make a minor change you can use this preview branch to do that because you can make a change on your code then you can deploy that change or you can push that change to github on a new branch and you can see how it looks like before actually affecting your main project now i'm not just going to say i'm going to show you how to actually do this so let's go back into our code quickly and right here, let me say I want to change something. I'm going to come into login. So right here where it says, let's just look for something different. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the top. So we can see that we have the Spotify text here. So let's just say Spotify. But this time around, let's say something like preview. And just do this. So let's do this and then let's save it. Now that we've done this, we've made a change, but we don't want this to be directly affected on our main actual deployed application. So what I'm going to do to test this or see how this looks like is to use a preview branch. So what I'm going to do is to say git. So I'm right here in my command and I'm just going to clear it out. So I'm right here in my terminal and I'm going to say git branch. So right now you can see that we are just on the main. And what I'm going to do is to say git checkout. B and let's just say something like. New, let's just say new. And now we've switched to a new branch called new and I'm just going to add. I'm going to say git add. And I'm going to say git commit. M and I'm just gonna say preview branch. So as you can see it has says that one file has been changed and now I'm just gonna git push set upstream origin new. Good now as you can see this has been done. And it has been successfully pushed to that repo. Now I'm just going to open up this git, this GitHub repository. As you can see, it says new as, as recent pushes 14 seconds ago. So what I'm going to do is just to create a pull request. I'm just going to compare and create. And you can see the title automatically is preview branch. And I'm just going to say create pull request. And that is going to create a pull request for us. But if you come here, you can see that Zit is building something. So if we actually give it a second, you're going to see it says we are building your pull request over on Zit. Click me to find more info, right? And you can say once built, this branch can be tested at, at this particular endpoint before merging. This is good. So this is just telling us because Zit has already started building something on this uh, pull request. And if we come back over to Zit right now, if, if you come into deployments, you can see that right here we have this branch 
which is the main branch and that is still deployed but now we have another branch which it says as active branch this is the other branch that we just created and this is currently being deployed so i'm going to come back when this has been deployed so now you can see that this has successfully been deployed and we now have a new branch of this particular project so as you can see it's a new branch under this active branch list so i'm just going to zoom in and what i'm going to do is to click on this active branch and right here you're going to see that this is a new project that has been deployed but on another branch and this is the branch called new so if i now click on this it's going to open up this endpoint and you can see that it's different from the main project so this is say spotify with preview in brackets but the main project is still this if i refresh this you're going to see that the main project is still intact but we have a preview endpoint for our project now this is very good this is very useful just in case you want to maybe make some changes but don't want it to affect the main project immediately now you've seen how easy it was to enable preview branches in zit zit has a dozen more features like that there are a lot of features that could help you deploy your application and maintain your application very well if you deploy with zit another one i'm just going to quickly talk about is auto scaling so enabling auto scaling for your application it allows you to automatically adjust the amount of computational resources provided to your cloud application or your cloud service so it's basically going to adjust the amount of resources needed based on its current load or usage demand now it's a very useful tool and you can head over to zit documentation and you're going to see how to use auto scaling static egress there's a lot of features that you can use to make sure that your application is solid once again there'll be a link in the description where you can directly sign up for zit or you can go to the documentation on zit so you can easily access all of these features or see how you can make your application better now this is also why i chose zit for this video because it allows us to easily deploy and also maintain our application so not just deploy but also maintain our application now i hope you understood everything i've talked about now we've come to the end of this spotify clone series now i hope you understood everything we did in this series and i hope you enjoyed the whole series if you did please don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe and if you have any question or you have anything to say just drop it down in the comments and i'll make sure to reply to all the comments so thank you so much for watching this whole tutorial and this whole series in general once again i'll see you in the next video and bye for now